H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. For those variables for which the size is, size is not fixed, take for example string. String the size is not fixed. So it cannot be sufficient if you change the value that might not fit there because immediately you will have some next variable stored. So in that case, uh, in that case, the actual values are stored in the heap. Now I'll tell the differences. One of you should explain me again. So I'll tell the differences between value types and reference types. Okay. So first one, value types are stored in stack. Reference types are stored in heap. In value types, variable will hold the actual value. In reference types, variable will hold the memory location. Third one. Retrieving data from value type is faster because directly the variable holds the value. Retrieving values from reference types is a bit slow when compared to value type because the variable will hold the memory location and in that memory location we have to go and get the value of string. I repeat again, one of you should say this uh, without a reading or something. So I repeat the differences again. In value types, value types are stored in stack and reference types the values are stored in heap second point the variable of value type will hold the actual value in reference types the variable will hold the memory location third point retrieving the value from value types is faster because the value is we are getting the value directly from the variable retrieving the value from reference types is slow because the variable will hold the memory location and we have to go to we have to read the memory location and then go to the memory location and get the value is it clear the three differences definitely you should know this you have to explain this so definitely you should know this so how many of you are not clear so are if you if you are clear just ping me as clear please ping me as clear Okay. Um, Sandhya, is it clear for you? Yeah. Okay. So, can one of you tell me the three differences? Uh, I'll 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 make you as presenter. Just tell the th three differences. Whatever I said. Who wants to go ahead? I want to see the active present. I mean, uh, I want to see uh, one of you should explain that. Just take this as opportunity immediately. So. Yeah, so Sandhya has some problem with microphone. So how about Babita and how about Sarika, Sonal, one of you wants to take it up? Just tell the three differences, whatever we discussed. Yeah, okay. So let me make Sonal as present. I mean, yeah, Sonal, um, Sonal, you can go ahead. The value type is stored in stack and the uh, reference type is stored in heap. Okay. So the value type will actually store the entire value, whereas the reference type will store the memory location. Perfect. And uh, uh, it has to read the memory location and go back and, re, uh, and retrieve the value. Okay. So third is the value type would be faster because in the value is entirely stored in that position. Whereas uh, the, it, the reference type will be slower because it has to go to the memory location and get back to uh, retrieve the data. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much, Sonal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is very clear explanation. Yeah, very quickly, we got the response from Sonal. Yeah. So uh, so those are the three differences. So I'll ask again sometime later or or tomorrow if I ask. So you you should be able to answer me. Okay. So yeah. So all of you, uh, please remember the differences. Thank you, Sonal. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move to, I'll, I'll just mute all of you. So we'll move to the next topic, which is, uh, yeah, okay, which is functions. Okay. 
so before functions we'll we'll I'll just explain what are arrays and how and then we'll come back to functions okay so now let me go back to uh, visual studio let me open uh, let me open visual studio and then we'll discuss on arrays and then we'll come back to functions so let me open visual studio 2013 okay so now now i'm going to explain file yeah so i got a question like how can we de define stack and heap uh, as data structure for storing values so maybe you can um, uh, you can tell like from the beginning of the memory if you are storing the values that is called a stack and if you are storing from the from the back side so then you can call it as heap very simple that might not be exact definition but you can tell this way okay so now i'm going to create a new project and and I'm going to create a console application. C sharp, select C sharp and then console application and click on OK. 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 So now now what I'll be doing here is so here uh, in C sharp I just created a console application so now we are going to learn what is the use of arrays what is the use of arrays so now I want to add two numbers I want to add two numbers so how should I do this I have to declare int a comma b and then and then uh, and then how to read the value so how to read the value from value of a from the keyboard how to read it so I can write console dot write line I can write here enter any number and then here how to read the value anyone uh, please to ping me in the chat window I want to read the value uh, in so console dot read line but but if I write a is equal to console dot read line it will throw me error so I need to do something what is that I need to do in the last class I discussed about it no no not printing a if you see here uh, if you see here this is uh, if you see here this is a string read line is a string but if you see a it is an integer so so I cannot I cannot store this into a because I uh, this is a string and there's an integer so if you remember last class I have used convert dot to int convert dot to int so now this this will also become integer so I'm converting whatever we are entering in the in the keyboard I'm converting that to integer so now I want to read the second variable so now let me copy this and then I'll put enter any number and then I'm storing it into B so now I want another variable to store some comma C so now let me put here C is equal to a plus B now how to print the value of C just I want to write console dot write line and I'll write here C okay so now uh, I have I'm reading the first number I'm reading the second number I'm writing C equal to a plus B I'm writing uh, I'm writing C now let me execute this so in order last line let me put console dot read line so that I can see the output so now let me run this code so when I execute this I can see that it is showing enter any number so so it will show me uh, it's taking time yeah so now I'm able to see here enter any number I'm able to see here 10 and enter any number I'm entering 15 so I can see that the output is 25 now what if I want to add four numbers I want to add four numbers what is the change I need to do all of you if I want to add add three numbers at least I want to add three numbers what should I do now please ping me in the chat window what I need to do if I want to add three numbers as of now I'm adding two numbers what I need to do if I want to add three numbers add one more variable perfect add an another line of code yeah I want to define another variable okay good all of you are right what if I want to add five numbers again question what if I want to add five numbers I want to declare five variables what if I want to add hundred numbers 
yeah so if i want to add 100 numbers yeah you got the answer so store it in array so if i want to add 100 numbers i cannot declare 100 variables so that becomes hectic so that is like you have to write a b c d f g h like you, you can have 26 variables again you have to come up with a1 a2 b1 b2 like this so that is like a hell for that reason if you want to store or if you want to read similar type of values you have to go for arrays that is where your arrays save you okay so if you want to add 100 numbers definitely it is not possible for declaring i mean it's difficult to declare 100 variables okay so let's try to see how we need to declare uh, declare an array and see how we can add five numbers using array so now let me open a similar data type yeah similar data type yeah arrays are used to store similar data types so let me open um, a pdf a ppt which i have prepared for uh, for arrays Okay, so just a second. Just a second. I want to remove the footers which I have is prepared. Okay, so now let's try to see the difference. okay so now let me open this so this is uh, this is for C language but still the syntax remains same so so now in C language we declare like this uh, but here in C sharp C sharp will declare uh, will declare like this so so let's see how to declare uh, a C sharp variable okay so before that okay so let me write here let me go back to this program I'll write here and then we'll get back there so here I'm going to declare a C sharp variable so you need to declare int I want to add six numbers so let's say for example I want to add a store marks is equal to new int of six okay so this is how we declare this is how we declare an array of uh, of marks which is actually integer of 6 so it can store 6 values in c language it, it's very simple to declare in c language you will declare like this int marks of 6 that's all but in c sharp you have to write like this int square brackets variable is equal to new int of 6 this is how we declare an array in c sharp in C sharp programming now let's now if I want to so here the key point to remember is so you will have array like this so you'll have an array which will actually have uh, so this will be the array marks so this will be the marks variable and the index starts from 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 so the index starts from 0 and so whenever you declare marks of 6 so of size 6 it will not start with marks of 1 the index of this array starts from 0 0 to 5 0 so if you want to store the first value for example 90 you want to store so now you have to write like this marks of marks of 0 marks of 0 is equal to 90 okay so you have to write something like this marks of 0 equal to 90 and if you want to store here uh, 95 then you have to write marks of 1 is equal to 95 so like this you can so with one variable but you are just writing in the bracket 0 1 2 3 4 5 you can store all the values so let's try to read five values and store it in marks so how to do that we'll see now so now what I'll do here so I'll declare another variable int i counter 
now i'll write a for loop so for i counter is equal to 0 because my array starts from 0 i counter plus plus i sorry for i counter less than 6 i plus i counter plus plus i'm not giving less than or equal to 6 because i have to i have to fill only till 5 because index starts from 0 i counter plus plus now now what i need here i need to read the value so i'll tell actually console dot write line enter value now i'll read here console dot uh, so so here i need to write marks of i counter is equal to marks of i counter is equal to i need to write here convert dot to int and then i need to write console dot read line okay so what happens is a first i counter value becomes zero so enter value will be printed there whatever value enter that will be stored in marks of zero then i value i counter value becomes one so enter value again marks of so like this it keeps on happening till five so now if i want to do sum of values so let me declare another value comma sum is equal to zero now i'll write another for loop for i counter is equal to zero i counter less than six i plus i counter plus plus so what i can do here is i can write like this sum is equal to sum plus marks of i counter that's it so now i'll remove all this okay so this is how we need to do so so i have declared a variable um, in a variable marks is equal to new win so this is how you have to declare a variable and then and then i have declared int i counter sum is equal to zero now now what i'm doing here i'm i have written a for loop to read from zero to i less than or i less than six i counter plus plus so first time i counter becomes zero so let me run this let me run this so that you will get some idea see now first time i counter is zero so so i got enter value and now when i enter some value that will be stored in marks of zero so i'll enter 10 here enter again it's asking enter value so like that until i value becomes i counter value becomes five so i'll be keep on asking enter value enter value so let me add 20 uh okay let me stop this and run again so i want to add the numbers so let me see how it happens so i'm entering here 10 i'm entering here 20 entering 30 entering 40 and entering 50. now how many numbers i have done with so i'm done with five so let me enter 60. so now i'm done with all the six values now what could be the what could be the answer quickly just want to see if you are listening or not so yeah all of you are very good in mathematics so yeah it is 210 so 30 60 100 210 yeah so let me press enter okay so what happened i didn't see the output so i don't have yeah i need to give console what do i need to give i need to give console dot read line so press a five so now 10 so 20 30 40 50 and 60 so now i can see that okay why i'm not getting the output anyone why i'm not seeing the output 210 because i have not written the statement to display okay so i need to write console dot write line sum then only you can see the output yeah so i need to write console dot I need to write console dot write line sum okay so this is how you need to write so if you press f5 so so one two three four five six so 21 is answered okay so now let's try to understand a bit more on this arrays so let me open this ppt so now if you declare an array like this so here let's try to understand so first point 
arrays are collection of similar data types so arrays are collection of anyway uh, don't worry about this point now this is not this is not the way we declare so we declare int of we declare int of marks this is how we declare int of marks is equal to new int new int of 4 if i want to store 4 i'll declare like this okay so int of marks is equal to new is equal to new int 4 okay so now these are the points you need to consider arrays are collection of similar data types array index starts with 0 so array index starts with 0 and these are collection of similar data types so you can only store integers and if you have uh, if you have array of string you can or if you have array of uh, array of float you can store float so here if i declare like int of mars i cannot i cannot store here 9.92.5 because this array is of type integers i can only store integers that's the reason arrays are collection of similar data types array index starts from zero array index starts from zero okay so next point size of array to be mentioned while declaring the array so when you are declaring the array you have to mention what is the size of the array you want so if you want size as 4 you need to mention that as 4 okay so the first point arrays are a collection of similar data types array index starts with 0 the second point you should remember size of array to be mentioned while declaring the array and the third point array elements are stored array elements are stored sequentially in the memory location so so if you see here uh, let's assume that integer takes two bytes in C language integer takes two bytes so in that case 92 is having 0 and next immediate two bytes 1026 which is 77 1028 which is 65 in C sharp if this is 1024 it will be uh, if if this is 1024 it will be 1028 and this will be 1032 and this will be 1036 so since in C sharp integer takes four bytes so what you mean to say is array elements are stored sequentially in the memory location so these are stored sequentially in the memory location it is not like one value will be stored in 1028 and the next value will be stored in 1092 1092 or something so immediately next sequentially it will be stored arrays are stored sequentially in the memory location i repeat again from the beginning the first point is array index starts from zero and arrays are a collection of similar data types the second point is you have to mention the size of array while declaring and the third point is array elements are stored sequentially in the memory location and the final point which you have is size of array will be the sum of size of all the elements so i have array of size 4 so each each element takes 4 bytes so now what could be the size of this marks total array total array size what could be now how many bytes ping me in the chat window no how many bytes yeah so bavik you are right so each value will take four bytes so i have marks of four so it will take 16 bytes that's a, that's what it means here size of array will be sum of the size of all the elements so the size is four into four which is 16. no you have to know the size of array that is a point which we declared uh, that is a point we saw here so so size of array to be mentioned while declaring the array so you have to mention the size of array while declaring okay so there sh there will not be point like what is the size of unknown array unknown sized array no we will know the array size while declaring itself so these are the four points which you should remember and we saw the simple demo so now i'll repeat the first four points the first point arrays are collection of similar data types and array index starts from zero second point arrays are stored sequentially in the memory location and the third point you need to tell the size of array by declaring and the fourth point the total size of element that the size of an array is equal to the size of all the elements adding sum of size of all the elements so now who wants to explain again Yeah, uh, don't worry about strings now. Uh, we have strings separate topic, uh, which is which will be a dedicated class for strings. So yeah, uh, only let's focus on value types and arrays. Yeah, strings definitely will will see strings 
again so now any questions here who wants to tell the four points quickly very quickly other than other than sonal and padmani who wants to tell very quickly what are the four points we discussed one of you please uh so babita or sarika seema one of you want to tell the four points which we discussed quickly yeah okay let sarika go ahead please so yeah i have unmuted you you can just go ahead and tell oh. yeah yeah go ahead yeah hi yeah and it is used to store a uh, similar data type right and and it, uh, index start with zero right and array uh, elements are stored sequentially in the memory location perfect and uh, size of array uh, we should uh, declare at that like size of array to be mentioned when we are declaring the um, array right right and uh, i i think you covered pretty much what is our one which is left others please add what is the topic what is the point uh, sh should in cover yeah yeah size of array is equal to sum of all the elements uh, yeah okay yeah. yeah yeah size of array will be the sum of all the size of all, all elements thank you sarka thank you very much yeah okay so so i think all of you are clear with uh, this so we'll also see some more examples this is a very simple example which we saw here so so here we wrote a for loop uh, we wrote a for loop to read the value uh, to read the value one by one so i counter starts from 0 and less than 6 so first when we enter the first value that will be stored in marks of 0 then marks of 1 marks of 2 like that it will be added till marks of 5 then again we wrote another for loop Uh, so initially the sum value is zero. So now I'm writing zero plus marks of zero. So that will be th that will be the first value added to sum. Second time I I counter becomes one. So like this it will keep on adding all the elements of the array and we are storing in sum and we are declaring we are uh, we are uh, displaying the sum here. Okay. So I'll be sending the assignment for all of you uh, who attended this class. So 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 please uh, so I. for the last class we discussed about quiz program so i only got answers from few of you so yeah yeah i'll be sending some assignments so definitely you have to practice it and you have to send me you have to mail me uh, your answers okay so this is about yes yeah so since this is uh yeah uh, i have uh, recorded i'll be sending the recording for this as well but i think only only till today we'll be sending uh, the recordings from next class um um yeah so even i have a, a suggestion even you you guys can install some free softwares and you can record the reason why we are we are not sending the recording from next class is uh we students i mean um, might share the videos and uh, so it might be uh, difficult for us so anyway we'll be sharing this class video as well okay okay so yeah yeah even previous class also yeah so yeah yeah i i got it yeah now this is about arrays so now we'll try to focus on the last topic for today is uh, we have functions so we'll again come back to arrays we'll see some more examples later uh when um, when we see some other examples so now you have to keep this in mind you have to declare an array like this which is very different from how you declare in c language so int of square brackets marks is equal to new int of again you have to write like this so we have something called two dimensional arrays as well so two dimensional arrays we declare like this i'll just tell how to declare so this is this is one dimensional array so we have uh, we have something called two dimensional arrays i'll just tell you how to declare we'll not discuss more now so two dimensional array so you need to declare like this int of and then 
and then mm, matrix is equal to new int of 2 comma 2 so this is how we declare a two dimensional array so here when you declare like this uh, when you declare like this so it it will be it will be like this so it will be like this so it will be an array of two dimensional array and this will be the name of this is matrix okay and this will be 0 1 and 0 1 so it will be like 5 10 22 and 11 so if you want to read uh, if you want to store the value in this you have to write mars of 0 comma 0 mars of 0 comma 0 you have to write like this and you have to store 5 this is how you have to store a value here okay so anyway uh, we rarely use two dimensional arrays but still you have to keep it in mind that uh, these are the rows and uh, and uh, these are the columns so normally this is used for matrix addition matrix multiplication so if you want to do some matrix addition matrix multiplication or so there we actually use it okay so so that's where we we actually use it I'll tell a simple program but I'll not explain now you have to understand you have to understand I'll send this for you the logic so now let me write it so I want to add two matrices for example matrix one so in college days you would have studied matrices so matrices are two dimensional so it will have rows and columns so so now I'm actually adding int of so matrix 2 is equal to new int of 2 comma 2 I'm not going to explain this you have to understand try to understand so int of is equal to sum is equal to new int of 2 comma 2 so now let me try to enter so so now I need to write two for loops here so one is for the rows and the other one is for the columns so I need to write for I uh, I so always refrain from declaring as i j k l like that don't declare the variables like that ensure that ensure that you write some proper variables so instead of declaring like int i comma j declare like this int i int i row counter i column counter like this so declare some reasonable values don't declare like uh, i j k l like that okay so now for for i row counter is equal to 0 i row counter less than 2 i plus plus i row counter plus plus so here I need to write and for, for i where is col column counter i column counter is equal to 0 i column counter less than 2 i column counter plus plus okay so here I need to write like this sum of sum of i row counter comma i column counter is equal to I need to read this from the user so enter so I need right here console dot right line enter element zero okay enter element for matrix one okay so I can give like this so now I need to read it so so here I need to write matrix 1 okay so I need right here convert dot to int console dot read line so might be difficult today for you to understand this but this is very simple very simple so I'm reading the values for first uh, first matrix and then I'll copy this I'm reading the values for second matrix okay so I'm just writing the same values for second matrix so here I need to mention matrix 2 now I need to find the sum of the matrices so sum of the matrix also is very simple so I'll copy this 
and right here so here what I need to do is sum of i row counter comma i column counter is equal to matrix 1 of so how many of you are thinking like this is this not going into the head so you're not able to take this up So first for loop to read the values of first matrix, second for loop to read the values of second matrix, and third for loop to read the values of uh, uh, to find some of the matrices and the last for loop is to print the values. okay so finally we are done okay so that's the reason why I didn't bring this up now anyway so this is very simple to understand but I mean looks complex but there is nothing in this okay so let me run this so I'm entering like the first matrix one two three four now enter elements for matrix two I'll enter uh, I'll enter one 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 so so I have the first matrix like one two three four so if you see here I have the first matrix like this 1 2 3 4 now I have the second matrix as 1 1 1 1 so what should be my sum of uh, sum matrix it should be so this is my first matrix and this is my second matrix the sum should be like this 2 3 3 plus 1 4 4 plus 1 5 so the sum should be like this so now if I enter press enter you can see the answer see here I'm seeing 2 3 4 5 two three four five so anyway uh, I'm getting here anyway this is something wrong but the output is I'm seeing two three four five so but uh, I if I want to see as a matrix so what I need to do here is uh, instead of right line I could have used right actually so the difference between right and right line is it will not add it will not go to next line so I can actually put like this see now if I run this now you can see that like a matrix so here two three four five one 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 see now I'm seeing this like a matrix three four five six okay so if you see here I'm seeing this like a matrix three four five six so these four elements belongs to first matrix so which is actually two three four five we read the values like that and these four elements are one 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 so one 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 so if you add this we'll if you add these two we'll get this matrix three four five six so forget about this uh, let's see why we got this so we'll try to remove it. okay so yeah okay so yeah we don't need to we don't need this this is the previous one code yeah okay so now uh, I'll send this code for you you try to understand and then in next class you can ask me if you if you are not able to understand okay now so we'll discuss functions in the next class so any questions you have so I'll send this code to all of you slash n it is for new line slash n is for new line because I printed the first two values two three and then uh, in the next row uh, we saw like four five in the next line when when the output is printed four five printed in one line and uh, six seven printed in the next line for that reason I added uh, slash n slash n is for the new line okay so I'll send this code try to understand yeah so for recording you can use uh, uh, software called cam studio or camtasia so like this we have we have some softwares which you can use for recording the class so Camtasia which is very good software so we have so many uh, softwares actually 
so for example uh, like this free screen recording software cam studio actually sorry i pinged wrong actually this is the software so when the class starts you just need to click on record and you can actually record it when the class ends you just need to stop it so the recording will stop a lot of students uh, normally do this uh, so um, so you can record it and you can actually uh, keep it for yourself okay so this is the software it's a free software it's an open source software so you don't need to just you need to open that you just need to uh, you just need to click on so just a second H2K Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.